Okay. Uh, welcome back, everyone. We'll uh, continue with what we are discussing. So we're talking about prophetic prayers. Uh, and I said that prophetic is to know the heart of God, to hear from God, and pray according to that. Because God knows everything. So what are some of the um, attributes of God, attributes or qualities of God? Huh. Um, you, you have Christology? This, no, you don't. OK, fine. Uh, so uh, he is omni? Omnipotent. Didn't? Then? Omniscient. Omniscient and? Omnipresent. Omnipotent. Okay. And omnipresent. And omnipresent. Okay, fine. Three things. Okay, so God is omnipotent, meaning he is all powerful, almighty. Omni, um, omnipresent, meaning he is present everywhere. Third is he is uh, omniscient. Omniscient means he knows everything. Uh, that is why we can tap into his heart because he already knows and based on that we can pray so in the bible there are some examples of people who prayed after they got a revelation from god and there was a certain outcome or a result to such prayers so what were the results so there were times when god revealed judgment that judgment is coming so when god revealed that judgment is coming people prayed and they asked God to stop the judgment okay, or to delay the judgment. And God did it. He answered their prayer. Uh, secondly, we see that um, God reveals um, that Satan is planning some attacks. Now, Satan has not yet done anything. But we, we see in scripture that there is a time when God shows that there is a plan of the enemy to destroy. Uh, and so we can pray against that, okay? And that can be overcome. Um, God also reveals people's destiny. Destiny means uh, what, what is it that they have been created for? What is in God's heart regarding their future, regarding their purpose? So God can reveal that to us, okay? Uh, and he can also... Uh, give us give us uh, a word to proclaim or declare upon the people according to his purpose so all this is prophetic and uh, we look at each one of them one by one so first i said that when there is judgment god reveals that and when we pray you know god will um, we we have seen god respond to the prayers of the people like uh, Maybe the judgment is stopped or the judgment is delayed. These things have happened in scripture. So do you remember anyone to whom God revealed a judgment? To? Okay. Uh, okay. So judgment to Nathan, right? Yeah, through Nathan. Fine. Okay. You could say so, uh, but more like a judgment on a community or a city. Jonah, okay. Abraham. Sister, Sodom yes, and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah, Abraham. So uh, Abraham uh, is a person that God told him, Abraham, I'm going to destroy. And what did, what did Abraham do? He said, okay, he God. He interceded with God. Correct. He interceded, right? So when God reveals something, we can either just take it as, okay, fine, this is just going to happen. Or especially when it comes to judgment, the reason why God reveals is when we pray, that judgment can be stopped. Okay? That's what Abraham did. He started talking to God. He said, okay, God, if there are so many righteous people, will you spare the land? If there are so many righteous people, will you spare the land? Can you imagine? God is actually engaging in that conversation. That means that there is a place for intercession of that kind where we can talk to God and we can request, we can plead with him and say, God, no, don't bring judgment on these people. Have mercy. Okay, have mercy. What is mercy? Mercy is when something that they deserve, right, that is not given to them. 
So uh, the wages of sin is death, or the consequences of sin uh, are uh, not good. But mercy says, even though they deserve punishment, even though they deserve judgment, fine, you know, we, we will not punish them. That is mercy. So we can plead with God for mercy. And many times God may reveal regarding judgment uh, so that people can pray. Okay. Now this is something we have to remember. When God reveals to us, let's say we have a dream or we are praying and we see something, we see a vision, uh, we receive a picture or a word comes into our spirit, uh, then what happens is we are in a hurry. We want to tell everything. We want to tell the whole world. You know, I saw this or maybe put it on YouTube, right? And say, this is what God showed me. This is going to happen. But is that the right way to approach uh, prophetic revelation? Anything that I receive from God, judgment is coming. Okay, My let sister. me put it on uh, social media. Yes, Sister Gertrude, you have something to say? No, you shouldn't tell. You shouldn't tell? No. Okay, fine. So that that is, uh, uh, you know, uh, Sister Gertrude's opinion. Fine. So this is what we are supposed to do. When God reveals something, the first thing that you and I should do is pray. Got it? When God reveals something, first thing that we must do with that information is pray. Pray for that person. Pray for that city. Pray for that nature, nation. Because it's always praying. The revelation that we receive is the right step. Now, sometimes God may tell us, you have to share this with somebody or you have to share this with... Uh, usually what we do is when we um, uh, share a prophetic word, we have to respect the authority of that, um, you know, let's say uh, if, if we are sharing a prophetic word in a church, I'm getting a prophetic word in a church. I've gone somewhere and I feel like this message is for the church. Now, I can't just go and talk to the congregation because I am not the person who is their leader or their overseer. I have to respect their pastor. So I must submit the prophetic word to the pastor. Do you understand? There is a way in which we must also communicate the prophetic word. Okay, Or maybe, uh, let's say there is a a child, a little a child that you're praying for, and God shows you, God shows you that uh, he has to go to this city, he has to study over here and do all these things. But this child may be, let's say, 12 years old. Okay, now I cannot go and tell that child, you're supposed to do this, leave this, go here, go there. What will happen? It'll create a lot of trouble because who's the authority over his life? He's still a minor. I need to communicate it to their parents. You understood? So there is a way in which we must communicate. And that also has to be done with wisdom. So every time God reveals something, it doesn't mean we have to speak it out. Okay. First thing we have to do is pray. And if God says this is a message, if it's a message for an individual, maybe they're an adult, that's okay. We can go share with them and say, hey, I, I, I saw this. Uh, I felt God is saying something to you uh, like this. Uh, does it make sense to you? And they may tell you, yeah, actually, I was praying about this matter. And you're right. Or uh, if, if it's not for a, an adult individual, then maybe, you know, you have to consider the authority over their lives before you just go ahead and tell them all kinds of things and cause confusion in that person's life. Okay. So now moving on. So if God reveals judgment, what do we do? We've got to pray for God's mercy. Uh, so there is this example of Amos in the Bible. Amos was a prophet. So in the Old Testament, we see that there are men uh, of God, women of God, who were chosen to be prophets. So they were the only people who could hear uh, clearly from God and hear often from God. So Amos is also one of those prophets. So in Amos chapter 7, we see that God shows him that uh, upon the uh, northern kingdoms of Israel, okay, uh, they were living in very prosperous times. Uh, first, initially they had difficult times, then they became very strong and uh, uh, comfortable. They had abundance in everything. But 
at that time what happened is the hearts of the people went away from god so uh, they started uh, engaging in a lot of evil uh, they were living for their own pleasure they were uh, living um, you know with Id idolatry they were worshiping idols so they were doing a lot of things which was against god so when all this continued god was very angry with them and he wanted to uh, bring destruction on the uh, on these kingdoms so who would god speak to and it's god's goodness actually his kindness that he shares ahead of time so he speaks to Amos. He gives Amos um, two, two visions. So in the first vision, Amos sees locusts. Okay, locusts come and they uh, eat up the crop. They destroy the crop. Uh, and the second vision, Amos sees uh, fire. Fire comes and destroys. But the good thing is, as a prophet of God, he knows what it means. Okay, now when we see a picture, we have to understand the meaning. What is God trying to say? through both of these uh, images or visions. Thankfully, Amos understood, very correctly he understood, that God is speaking about judgment upon the people. Destruction is coming. So we also see in that passage, Amos chapter 7, you can go and read it, uh, when he uh, recognizes that God is saying judgment is coming, he pleads with God. He says, God, relent, meaning, please, let it not happen, forgive. Forgive the people, have mercy on these people. And the Bible says that God listened to him and God did not bring the judgment. Okay, that's so amazing. That is why God even reveals it to us because he wants us to pray. Can you imagine in uh, uh, Genesis 18, when Abraham uh, is talking to God, God is actually giving him an opportunity to intercede for the sinful people of Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, in this case, Amos chapter 7, though they deserve punishment, judgment, God says, okay, Amos, if you're praying, fine. You know, I won't bring judgment on them. So in the book of Ezekiel, when we read about uh, uh, intercession, we will see that God is looking even for one man, one woman, okay, who can stand in the gap and who can pray for the people. Even then, even if one person does that, God is willing to um, uh, avert that judgment that comes upon the people. So uh, this is something for us to remember. So if God shows us something, pray. Okay, ask God for mercy. And uh, then ask God, God, what do you want me to do? Who is this message for? Should I communicate it to anyone? And if yes, communicate it in the correct way, not just, you know, random going and uh, telling everyone okay so uh, in this way we can actually pray for the people pray for um, uh, the land so even in the case of Moses we find that there were many times when God told him oh look at these people such unbelieving people stubborn people okay stiff-necked people I'm just going to destroy them because I brought them out of Egypt I did miracles in their lives now, when I brought them out, now they're complaining about, you know, food is not good, water is not there. And God was so angry with those people because they were not grateful for the things that God was doing. They were not recognizing the greatness of God, the miracles of God. So God told Moses many times, I'm just going to destroy them. I'll just destroy them. And some of them God destroyed also. But what did Moses do? Every time he went back to God and he was interceding, he said, God, they are your people. Okay, if you destroy them, what will the nation say? So he's interceding, prophetic intercession. When God communicates judgment, we as God's people can rise up and say, God, have mercy. And God listened. God listened to Moses. God listened to Amos. God listened to Abraham. God will even listen to us. And that is why he's showing it to us. Because he wants somebody to pray. Yes, Akil? Yeah? Sure. Hmm. Okay, fine. Hmm. Hmm. 
yeah so it's correct because uh, sometimes we get dreams and um, i forget the scripture i'll just see Okay, yeah, uh, Ecclesiastes 5.3, it says, as dream comes through many cares. Okay, so uh, that means that in general, like even if you take, um, you know, like medical science and all that, they say that uh, normally all of us get dreams every time we rest, we sleep, we go into, uh, you know, um, sleep. But there are only some dreams which are from God. Not every dream is from God. Okay. Now, how to know whether a particular dream is from God? Generally, what happens is, uh, like I was just sharing with one of us here also, like Romans 8, 16, it says, the spirit bears witness with our spirit, which means the Holy Spirit bears witness with the human spirit. Or in other words, the Holy Spirit tells us he indicates to us and he says, this dream, take note of it. It's not ordinary. Something, some message is there in this dream. So we need to be sensitive to some particular dreams because Holy Spirit will um, point to us that there's something special about this dream. Okay. So that's how we know, Akhil. And the more we practice, so when we are alert at all times, we'll pick it up quickly that, hey, this dream. Uh, this is some something God is trying to tell me. Okay, so that that is one thing. Uh, what was your second part? Oh, if it couldn't interpret, if he couldn't interpret the dream. Okay, so what we can do is we can just write it down. Okay, so I do that if I get a dream and I feel like it's from God. Uh, usually I'll share it with my my sister. So that morning still I'll just text her because we kind of share uh, the uh, dreams and so that there's a record of it also. So I just write it down. And if it's something shareable, then I will share it. Uh, and uh, you may not know the meaning of it immediately, but you can start praying and saying, God, give me the interpretation of this. So we see one example in um, Acts chapter 9 and Acts chapter 10. Uh, Peter, right? Peter, he is uh, living in Simon the Tanner's house, and God gives him a vision. He sees the the um, um, yeah, there's a sheet comes down. All the animals are there, and God tells him, "Okay, you can kill and eat." Okay, uh, but he remembers the the law uh, because according to the the law that was given by Moses, you can't eat. Uh, you know, uh, certain animals, so unclean animals. Uh, so he says, he feels that, okay, I should not eat those animals. But God tells him, uh, no, you know, don't call it common. You can, you can eat. So then Peter is wondering, what does it mean? What does it mean? Right? But in this situation, the funny part is, he doesn't get the interpretation. He doesn't understand. He's not understanding. But even when he doesn't understand, what God has done is he has given a message through an angel to another man called Cornelius and told that man, you send people to pick up Peter. So the Bible says, like, Peter's still thinking, what does it mean? And in, the, in that time, these men come to uh, Peter's, Simon's house and say, okay, Peter, come with us. We want to take you. So it's like when he is just obeying God and he's going to Cornelius's house, somewhere there, the picture becomes clear to him that what was the meaning of this dream? Is God saying uh, he has changed the law? Is God saying we can eat everything? But he gets the interpretation. The actual interpretation of the dream is, um, OK, animals, all that is fine. Eating uh, every form of animal, don't call it unclean. That's fine. But the actual interpretation of the dream is the gospel is not just for the Jews. The gospel is for the whole world. So that was the first time in the history of the church that Peter and that to Peter was, you know, he was very much about his own community, the Jews. 
but god told peter you go and preach to cornelius cornelius is a gentile he would have never done it unless god told him that and god communicated in a vision and said the gospel has to go to the gentile stop saying that you won't go to this community and that community stop it the gospel has to go to everyone that is the actual meaning of that dream right and he shares it later in acts chapter 10 he talks about it he he shares it with the elders in jerusalem so that's the way but the point is that uh, he didn't understand when he got it so it's okay sometimes we will get a vision or a dream and we don't know what it means it's fine just write it down and start praying god may reveal it little by little here and there okay long answer to a short question but anyway uh, i hope that makes some sense anything else uh, or can we move on i said that if there are judgments then god reveals uh, we can pray for god's mercy in that situation yes god can tell us through prophecy yes it can happen so uh, uh, can god speak to us through the verses of the bible yes he can he can just uh, you know tell us directly that way also it happens okay, fine um all right let's move on so we saw that uh, judgment can be averted now i told that uh, sometimes god can reveal the plans of satan satan you know um, he's an enemy he wants to destroy god's people he wants to destroy god's work and uh, god's purposes so it's his normal thing you know he will keep planning something against god's people how to distract them how to bring them down how to destroy um, their focus so uh, when these things happen god can actually show it to us beforehand so that we can start to pray okay uh, there is a time when peter talking to peter jesus says in luke 22 verses 31 and 32 jesus tells him simon simon indeed satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat but i have prayed for you that your faith should not fail and when you have returned to me strengthen your brethren so what is jesus saying in this jesus is saying satan has plans but you are protected peter you are protected simon peter okay uh, why because i have prayed for you i have prayed for you so when we recognize by revelation that satan is trying to do something we can pray and when we pray what happens protection that's what jesus said right i have prayed for you though satan is trying to do these things it won't affect you because i have prayed for you and that brings protection on your life so uh, you see when there is prayer okay it acts as protection so we see in a couple of um, scriptures uh, hosea chapter 12 and verse 13 it says by a prophet the lord brought israel out of egypt and by a prophet he was preserved so uh god is sharing that in the prophetic anointing okay through a prophet uh, god brought the children of israel out of egypt and through a prophet there there was preservation or protection this word protection uh, it's the word shamar in the hebrew language okay preserve is shamar in the hebrew language what does it mean it's like if you have a house and uh, uh, there are no boundary walls imagine the campus that we live in if it doesn't have boundary walls we feel so unprotected right even though this whole space is ours uh, anyone can come in any time uh, and that's not safe but shamar means hedge or cover around okay so what we recognize is that through a prophet or through the revelation that we receive there can be protection if we pray got it so uh, when god reveals any plan of the enemy we can start praying for those people and what will happen there'll be like a hedge 
like you can imagine like a compound wall or a hedge god is protecting them through our prayers that is shamar and that is a responsibility that god gives us same thing let's say god gives us a revelation about someone in their life some attack something is going to come what do we generally do we'll go and tell that brother hey god has showed me satan is going to attack you this is going to happen to you whether the attack happens or not because of fear only that person will be like oh gosh what will i do now because satan is going to attack me right so we cause fear and we don't cause faith in their hearts that's not the point so god shows us something we have to pray for them when we pray what will happen protection that's what jesus said simon i've prayed for you uh nothing's going to happen to you even though this is satan's plan um we in our notes it also says that especially when it comes to leadership in a church or um, uh, you know in the kingdom of god any kind of leadership when god calls us to leadership we lead people you know we teach we instruct we guide we nurture uh, we do all those things but when you look at the leadership of moses one of the things that he did because he was a prophet and what did we see in hosea 12 13 he prayed right he prayed through a prophet israel was protected so his prayers protected the people so a responsibility of leadership is to pray for the people we have to pray for the people god will give us revelation of different things hey satan is planning this satan is planning that this attack that attack but as a leader when we see something we can sense something happening we should start to pray for the people right so when we pray for the people god will protect them from dangers from deception from temptation from uh, you know anything that satan is planning against them so uh, this is also very important for us to uh, ensure that satan's attacks are destroyed we can destroy through prayer uh, and that's why even for parents right um, they have authority over their children so we'll read about this later um, there is something called called as uh, structures okay godly structures so god gives some people in leadership and god's authority flows through that structure we cannot destroy that structure and there is a lot of um, uh, sort of like power if that authority functions right so even when it comes to children usually god communicates to the parents visions dreams everything and they start praying for the children that's very powerful they can actually destroy the works of the devil in the lives of their children just through prayer maybe their children are far away you know they are they are working far away studying far away but the prayers of the authority figures in their life maybe their parents will really affect them protect them from the attacks of the enemy um so that is something for us to remember uh, is, is that fine anything here or uh, we'll continue okay fine let's continue so yes mm okay yeah okay hmm okay so uh, the question is that um, if god gives a corrective word for someone then um how can we communicate that um because the person might think that we are judging them right so in such a situation usually i think just pray just pray don't communicate uh, uh because there's a right way to communicate um and generally as i told you right authority structures so there's a pastor to the church uh the elders so maybe uh in confidence at some point if you're meant to share that word you may have to get the counsel of the elders and say that uh, it's constantly coming back to me how do i share this you have to submit that word with them and then with their guidance uh, you can communicate if you directly go communicate it may not work 
Hmm. Yeah, so somebody trusted, like a trusted elder, you can take in confidence to do this. Okay, fine. But there are some relationships, maybe you're very close to someone and then you get a word. It's easy. In that situation, you can easily share with them, but otherwise, it's difficult. Yeah. I'll come to you, Sister Gertrude. Is there a question? Sir. Uh, I just wanted to ask you, you know, if there is an enemy attack in your life, hmm. then you have to pray through spiritual warfare prayer, uh, singly or mutually. Okay. Uh, sister, can you come again? Uh, the attack of Satan, where? Where is the attack of Satan? Attack of the enemy on your life or anything, you know. And uh, do you have to pray in spiritual warfare alone or mutually? or with uh, agreeing with somebody. OK, so I see if there is an opportunity to pray with people, you can. But in some situations, we may not have. Uh, in that situation, if you pray alone, even then it will be effective. Oh, OK, you know, like, sister. Yeah, but they slept, right? Jesus ended up praying over there. Um, Thank and, you, sister. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Yes. Is it possible to use the mic? Because uh, online, it's uh, it'll be an empty space. Hey, careful. Yeah, sure. In response to uh, Saga's question, yes, the context in which Jesus was referring about judgmental is about you know trying to. Uh, first, remove the speck out of your eye before you remove the dust of the other person's eye. Mm -hmm. So that's more of trying to, you know, being character judgmental. Mm. But when assuming, now say there's a dream that Sagar gets in his heart. Mm -hmm. So with love, he can always approach me and he can, you know, tell it. See, this is I just want to share something with you. It's like a burden on my heart, and I just had a vision or a revelation from God. Mm. So can I, you know, share it with you? Okay. So would you think that would be ideal? Because I understood his question. Yeah. The judgmental part was more with regard to judging a character of a person. Correct. And the burden that God has put in Sagar's heart or a dream is something that you know God is using him to pass a message to X, Y, or Z. Yeah. So see, it depends on the relationship. Okay. It depends on the relationship. And if uh, he feels comfortable to put it across and you are there, you may you're ready to receive it, it's fine. It's fine, but usually these corrective words are you know, very tricky. You feel like, yeah, you, you're already good friends with them and all, but it can go this way or that way. It can go anyway. So that's why I'm saying when if it's a corrective word, pray a lot, think a lot, you know, see how God is leading you to actually communicate it. Because for that person, it may not be easy to digest what we are saying. Okay. All right. So I'm um, just coming here to a point on the chat. Um, OK, uh, Brother Biju is saying, if we pray for someone who has harmed us, what will happen as per scripture? So if we pray for someone who has harmed us. So brother, uh, like Job, no? we look at the life of Job. That's the example. and. Um, we know that God told Job to pray positive things or blessings for the people who offended him or harmed him. And the blessings on Job's life doubled after that. So uh, we, don't, we don't see this thing of, uh, you know, if somebody has hurt us, then we go ahead and pray curses on them. That's not biblical. You don't find that in, in scripture. Is that okay, Brother Biju? You have any follow up question to that? No, sister. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, sure. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. All right. Uh, so then I'll move on. Two more uh, parts here uh, regarding prophetic prayer, prophetic intercession, um, birds, prayers that release one's destiny in God. So, how does this work? When you look at um, um, Simon Peter, okay, in the Bible, 
okay uh, i hope uh, peter is not angry with me but <laughs> i'll just say you generally see that he talks before he thinks okay and you find that he's he's sort of getting into trouble and jesus has to tell him simon calm down relax okay but the thing is uh, when jesus sees him he's so raw he's so unprepared to become the leader of the church but jesus knows that peter will be that leader of the early church so in the book of acts there's a complete turn around if you talk about peter he's a different man he takes up leadership first he gets up and you know he speaks he leads the people amazing transformation in the life of peter but initially that's not the case he he messes things up quite quickly and he, he even denied jesus okay so we may wonder like jesus why did you pick this man you could have picked somebody else no but when jesus meets peter he says uh, uh peter you are the rock isn't it he talks about his destiny when he meets peter so what is that that is that is a prophetic word about the life of this man maybe right now he's very raw but there is a great future ahead for this man called peter so what happens even in our lives before the transformation maybe even when people are um, very young children god reveals the destiny think about john the baptist okay the father zacharias you find that um, his speech was gone and uh, but when he takes the baby he starts to pray a prayer a long prayer you'll read um, when when about his own son and he starts saying prophetic words you child you will do this you will do that how does zacharias know it's the prophetic anointing on the life of uh, uh, zacharias that leads him to pray a prophetic prayer for his own son he comes to know what god wants him to do okay so the point is sometimes god reveals early early on what is the destiny of somebody now just because god reveals it doesn't mean that you will see them become that mighty prophet in uh, you know tomorrow or in two years or three years it may take a decade two decades we don't know but what is our responsibility when we know the destiny of someone same thing pray intercede okay uh, we may find that maybe you know it's a, it's a brother or a sister uh, in in our lives and they are not following god they are in all the wrong things but we know there are prophetic words on their life that god is going to use them as a mighty minister of god so what should i do as a sibling pray pray keep praying keep praying but, but we may look at their life and say what is this nothing is happening there is no change but the reason why god revealed it to us is so that we can intercede we'll talk about intercession later intercession is uh, you know going before god on behalf of someone till uh, that promise or that word is fulfilled so when we know someone's destiny god actually wants us to pray for them it may take many years also to keep praying that this is their destiny god their life should not be destroyed this is their destiny god um you know we do not allow satan to have any rule in their lives this is their destiny god we bind every uh, spirit of uh, you know confusion all that kind of spiritual warfare we are supposed to engage in so through revelation god can reveal uh, the purpose of anyone's life okay anybody's life you remember nathaniel there's a man called nathaniel so when jesus looks at him jesus does not even know him but he says here's a man without any guile how does jesus know it's discernment in the spirit it's the prophetic anointing by which he's he's talking about the character of someone without knowing that person okay so this is the way in which we can receive revelation uh, through the prophetic anointing or the prophetic revelation but whatever we receive as information pray okay that's the main reason why god is showing it to us and finally here uh we must declare the word of god okay? declare it uh whatever god intends 
for someone, we are supposed to speak that out. So can somebody read Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 9 and 10? Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms, to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. OK, so um, what God is doing is he gives us his word to do a work, you know? Uh, and that's how God works. How does God work? He gives us a word. We go to God and say, God, this is my problem. Help me, help me, help me. And then God gives us a word. Or he starts speaking to us. And we say, God, I don't need a word. I don't need you to say anything. Just do something. Get me out of this trouble. But you know what? God works through his word. God wants to do something about your situation. That is why he's giving you a word. Because there is power in that word. Okay, Even in the passage that uh, uh, Akhil just read, God is revealing a, like a powerful thing. He's telling Jeremiah that I put my words in your mouth to do some things. So when you speak the word, amazing things are going to take place root out, pull down, build up. How is it possible? Just by speaking God's word, can, can you uproot? Can you build? You know, we all know, we, we are seeing construction happening around us. If you want to pull down something, we want to break one building, we look at a bulldozer. We need a big, powerful uh, instrument to do it. But what is God saying? No, no, no. I'm giving you my word. Because in the spiritual realm, the word has power. It's like that bulldozer. You speak my word upon the situation. You speak my word upon the circumstance. In this case, to Jeremiah, uh, he's giving a word for the people. Okay. So when Jeremiah, as a prophet, he declares the word. When you declare the prophetic word, don't underestimate its power. Something amazing can take place. God can build through the declaration of that word. You know, sometimes when we have worship, we, we say that, right? We are declaring the victory of God. And don't underestimate it. That's what God did with Jeremiah. He just put a prophetic word in his mouth. I'm putting my word in your mouth. Speak it. When you speak it, there'll be destruction of the enemy. When you speak it, there'll be building up of the kingdom. So we call this proclamation. We proclaim the prophetic word. So there are times when we receive a revelation from God to speak it and declare it. It's you know part of spiritual warfare. It's part of what we do in the kingdom of God. We are supposed to speak it. Um, okay. Uh, we talked a lot about interceding, intercede, and God reveals something to you. But there's also a time when we are supposed to declare and decree. Put that word in your mouth and keep speaking it. And that is what will do the work in the kingdom of God. So this is the way the prophetic word works. So I think I'll wrap up with that. But if there are any questions, we can uh, take it up. So please feel free. Um, anything about prophetic prayer? Yes, sure. Small note. Yeah. Uh, so suppose if you're know, talking about prophetic prayer, and when God reveals to you, so sometimes do we actually have to see? I understand the sensitivity of you know how will the receiver hear what God has revealed. Mm. But if God has put something on my heart to mm. reveal, should I actually do what God has told me to do, or rather than being sensitive of how he or she would accept it? Yeah. See, rather just be gentle and in a softer 
Yeah, so see, the Bible teaches us speak the truth in love. Okay, sometimes the truth can be very, um, very difficult to receive, but we can communicate it in a nice way, in a loving way. But we are supposed to speak the truth. So it's okay to share. Um, but you know what I'm. Each one yeah. of us like to hear something really nice from a prophet. Hmm. So if something God has revealed something very nice to me about XYZ, it's, it's easy to tell. Yeah. But uh, as a prophet, it is you have to reveal whatever God has to, provided you're not a false prophet. Yeah. No, that's okay. Uh, Kill. I'm saying if you're supposed to communicate it, you communicate it. Uh, but it's all about the presentation. So in that book, no, uh, understanding the prophetic, we will read about that also. For example, now David. Okay, David sinned. Um, he um, engaged in adultery. Okay. Now Nathan, the prophet, has to go and correct him. Now Nathan can go and tell him, uh, "You adulterer, David, you've sinned against God." What would have happened? I don't know, maybe Nathan would have been thrown out and uh, David would have said, I don't want to listen another sentence from you. You leave right now. Because it's the presentation. How did Nathan do it? He was very wise. He told him a story. He said, look, it's like this. There's a story in this story. This, there are this, uh, this Eve and this man takes it away. Uh, who, who should be punished? And uh, David says, this man. right? And then Nathan says, that man is you. So nicely he put it. He got the message through. It's a very difficult word of judgment. But we need the wisdom of God. That's my point. Okay. So the presentation. If God is telling you, you have to communicate it. Yeah, do it. But how are you going to communicate? That's another very, very important thing to think about. Okay, fine. Right. Anything else? Prophetic? Prophetic intercession, prophetic revelation. Okay. Okay. But the Sanjay is asking will the online students have supernatural hour again or is it only for the in person students? So um, we tried making the online um, on campus supernatural hour available to the online students. Uh, but then we felt that maybe a lot of people are not yet able to connect to it. So which is why we, we stopped it. Uh, but let's see how it goes. Maybe that timing is not suiting uh, a lot of people. Yes, some, some folks were able to connect. But then um, we are still thinking about this. Um, what may be a suitable time for both the online and the e-learning students so that we can have a larger number of uh, people connect to the online session. So as of now, it's on a pause. But every last Friday of the month, we will have extended uh, periods of intercession and worship, 12 noon to 5 p.m. here on our Bible College campus. So um, if there's anyone who's interested, you can come and join us here. So that's an option for the online students right now. And um, uh, I, ho I hope that's OK, uh, Brother Sanjay. OK, fine. So moving on to Lucy, if it's only a word God put in your heart, believe. How do we go about it putting into action? So so that's what, no, Sister Lucy. Um, it, it's not about how big the word is or how long the sentence is. The point is, God is speaking. Even if God says only one word, believe, that means there's something in that for uh, you to do. So once you get the word, you start praying about it and start asking God what you need to do. OK? So I think I'll just uh, stop with that. Let us pray, and we will close. Uh, can somebody from the online batch uh, lead us in prayer? Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank and praise God for this wonderful opportunity that you have given us to come and learn the word of God, O oh Master. Hallelujah. Today we learned about the intercessory prayers and the importance of prayer in our lives, O oh Master. Oh, thank you, Lord, for speaking to us. We would learn that 
we should pray for our adversaries for our enemies and we should uh, place ourselves in the gap and uh, pray for others so master thank you for speaking through hallelujah madam uh, hallelujah nancy and we pray that in the coming days we should practice what we have learned today oh master uh, hallelujah we pray for all the participants and uh, our faculty members oh lord hallelujah please bless us throughout the day and the days to come we everything we ask in jesus mighty name amen 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 thank you thank you brother biju thank you everyone uh, god bless you have a blessed day we are just wrapping up for now